All right, welcome back to uh, another lecture wrap-up uh, video here for lecture number nine. So today we talked about uh, specifically looking into inductors and capacitors. So these are the other two sort of core elements that we'll be looking at here in Engineering 17 at UC Davis for this quarter. Uh, so the idea for, your, for today was simply to introduce these elements and then uh, starting next time we'll be talking about actually starting to introduce these into uh, circuits with resistors specifically which we've already been covering in detail. So again kind of main highlights here that I have on the board which I'll just recap real quick. Uh, so again uh, first inductors here we've got a standard symbol shown here and again we want to follow the standard passive sign convention uh, that's explained in the book where uh, the current that's traveling through the inductor is defined as going from the positive to the minus side of whatever the voltage across that given inductor is. So we've uh, started out with this sort of core relationship for an inductor which relates the voltage uh, to a, a function of the change in current. And again, remember for both these elements, the, the inductor and capacitor were really concerned with uh, changes in, in either current or voltage with respect to time. And so these are very different kind of elements uh, than resistors, which we've been dealing with, where resistors were you know, very um, responsive just in the steady state where everything's kind of fixed at equilibrium. We have to worry about any time variance per se. But now as we start to introduce these other types of elements, which are still passive elements, but have uh, different characteristics, we need to be concerned with the, uh, the, the rate of change with respect to time in this. So again, the voltage is related to the inductance L. So L is the symbol again for inductance. Uh, times the rate of change of the current with respect to time, all right? So then we went to the process of deriving a similar expression to, to define what the current is as a function of the voltage. So we're just basically uh, reversing this equation here, but having to go through a little bit of integration to get that, such that that's the inverse of the inductance times the integral of the voltage uh, with respect to time from T0 to some time T. Uh, plus I at T0, whatever the current is at the starting point of your integration. All right, so again, second main uh, component element that we looked at was, it was capacitors. Here showing the just standard uh, schematic representation of what a capacitor is going to look like. Again, primarily just notice here that there is a, uh, a differentiation between the positive and the negative terminal. The negative terminal is typically shown uh, using a curved uh, uh, portion here and still the current is defined using the passive sign convention going from positive to negative terminal of our capacitor. So the main relationship we start out with this one is defining what the current is through a capacitor with respect to the rate of change of the voltage times that capacitance C. Okay? And again, remember uh, that we went through the process anyway of, of, again, just reformatting this equation here in terms of the voltage so we could get to find what the voltage as a function of time is with respect to what's happening in the current. So this is, again, one over C integral of T, T0 to T of the current, uh, plus whatever the voltage is at time T0 as well. So again, these are just kind of first uh, primary equations we want to look at. We also talked about power and energy in both inductors and capacitors. So there were, again, we had more equations for those, just to give you an idea. I haven't written them out explicitly here, but again, just check your notes or the book for those as well. <clears throat> All right, so the final thing we, we sort of wrapped up at the end of the period was talking about how um, once we start to see inductors, capacitors in circuits, how we can again reduce them down to equivalent inductances or equivalent capacitances, very similar to the series of parallel rules that we've been using for resistors. So the primary ones for inductors here, if you have inductors in series, these act just very similar to resistance, resistances such that the, the equivalent inductance for res, inductors in series is simply the sum of each of the individual conductances. And the parallel equivalent conductance is again this 1 over L equals 1 over uh, each one of the given inductances that you have in parallel. So these rules are very similar to what we saw previously with resistors. Now capacitors are sort of like the opposite case, okay? So with capacitors, um, the series equivalent capacitance is 1 over that equivalent capacitance uh, is the sum of the inverse of each of the individual capacitance, one over C1 plus one over C2 plus however many other capacitors you have in series. And then in parallel, if you have capacitors in parallel, this is where the, the equivalent capacitance of all those capacitors in parallel is simply the sum of the individual capacitance, 
past instances that are uh, sitting in parallel. All right, so that was basically the main ideas from this lecture here. So again, we'll, we'll start to see these uh, in action in some circuits starting next time, and uh, but you'll be able to get some uh, exposure to these through your homework as well. So I hope to uh, see you next time. As always, stay classy. Somewhere it's Boxing Day in Canada. Let's drop this train.